Sometimes data is not available when you need it. In this video, I will show you how delayed data can hurt your machine learning models and three strategies to solve it. Hi there, I'm Kevin Fernandez, father of one boy, one dog, and hundreds of machine learning models. And of course, you know, if you are a father or if you are not, let me just tell you this story. You will read these books and they will tell you like babies are like Swiss watches. Okay, so they sleep 12 hours, they need to eat every two hours, and you need to change their diaper like 10 times per day. Okay, in reality, you start parenting. And it never happens. Okay, they never sleep 12 hours. They just sleep, you know, randomly. They just eat randomly, and they just and you just need to change their their diaper a random number of times every day. And with machine learning models, it's not the exception. Okay, it's kind of the same thing. If you read a book about machine learning, or if you get a dummy data set, Kaggle, you will see that you know the data is super clean. Everything is sync. All the data is there available when you need it. In real life, that's not the case. Okay. The, the engineer that told you that data was supposed to arrive every day at 7 a.m., it turns out that some days it doesn't arrive. Some days it arrives 9 a.m., some days it arrives partially, okay? And, you know, the client told you that this batch of data was going to be integrated the first day of every month, and sometimes it doesn't happen, okay? And this is the reality, and you will need to know how to deal with this scenario you, uh, in the same way that you will need to understand when your, baby, when your baby is hungry, when your baby needs to sleep, okay? So let me give you some advice on how this could happen. On real life, let's say you have these three data sources, data source A, B, and C, and uh, data is like generated like this, okay? And, you know, typically when you look at your train set, you look like a, a snapshot of the data, okay? Like this snapshot here, and everything looks super sick. Everything looks like in the books. Look, it's super beautiful. All seen, you have all the data available when you need it, as long as you are doing using your training set. But when you go and look at your test set, when you look at the inference, we go to production, and this is today, okay? You will see that this data set was actually up to date. This other one has a had a, a gap here, and this one had a huge gap, gap here. Why? Because this data set was integrated live, this was integrated weekly, and this was integrated every month. Okay, for example. Okay, so this is like a very common uh, use case. By the way, if you don't know how to deal how to deal with incomplete data, there is a course the machine learning inspection. I will leave the link below. Okay, and let me give you two examples of where this could happen. For example, you are building like a recommended system. Sometimes cleans are integrated like uh, like live, okay, like by the second. Every second you get the, the, the clicks, but sometimes like sales comes from the accounting department and you only know the right sales like by the end of the month, okay? So you have some data that is weakly integrated, some data that has some gaps here. Another use case here is, for example, asset valuation. Like, let's say you are running like a real estate multiple listing site, okay? And you see the data, the complete data on the historical data set. But if you look at the live, uh, the live postings, actually data starts incomplete. And as there are some interactions with the property, you see that the property starts to get filled, like the number of rooms, like the number of bathrooms, like the meters, like photos, etc. When you look historically, retroactively, you will see it, like the data is complete. When you look at the live data, you will see that part of the data is missing and is actually generated as time passes. Okay, so these are two examples that we have work on and where this actually happened. And you know, there are some, there are actually two potential problems with this. One is that your model may fail in production if it is not prepared to do this, okay? And it's actually not a problem, but a good thing, because at least it will fail and you will know that, that, that this thing is happening. The actual bad problem here is if your model doesn't fail, doesn't fail, but it get biased predictions. Why? Because it's, it is used to get predictions that are all sync, so that each and every data source was already integrated and now it needs to do prediction on a context where there are gaps okay it will generate a prediction the prediction will just be wrong and the model will perform 
poor way and you compare it with the training data set, okay? So these are the two main problems. If you like this content, by the way, like this video. And now let's go to, first of all, how to recognize this situation and second, strategies to solve it, okay? So how to recognize it? My, my strategy is basically looking at today's data, so at the most recent data, comparing all data sources to understand which data is delayed, okay? Which, which gaps are there on the data set, okay? And this is my first approach. This will help you to solve like the first example, okay? When there are gaps, because the data is not integrated as they promised you it was going to be. The second issue is more tricky, right? There's the, the problem where the data is just adjusted over time, but you only have the final snapshot of it. How can you, how can you properly identify this situation? Basically, you fix a date, example, let's say today. And today, I will generate the predictions for today, okay? And let's say that the prediction gives me like 0 0.5, okay? The probability of the asset views, okay? Then I will check tomorrow and I will ask for the prediction of today. If this prediction changes, it's because there are some adjustments. And I will do this like several days until I'm confident that the data is actually stuck, okay? This is like the easiest way I have found to detect that this is, if this is actually happening. So how to solve this problem? If you identify, if you get into a problem and you identify that this is an issue, how can you solve it? Let's say that there are non delays. For example, let's say that you know already that data is integrated on a daily basis for, let's say, clicks and on a monthly basis for actually counting sales day. In this case, then you just need to simulate this on your feature structure. So whenever you are building the features that your model can observe, consider that you only can observe like up to last month for the sales data and on to, up to yesterday for the click data. Okay, so recreate this process if you know the actual gaps. If you don't know the gaps, you can still do some augmentation where you will randomly create gaps where you will say, you know, I know that this data set is integrated within the first seven days of the month, but I'm not sure which date. So I will create random gaps, fictional gaps of seven days at the beginning of the month, where I will say for this observation, I will assume the data was integrated on this point. For this observation, I will assume the data hasn't been integrated yet. So do basically prepare your model to understand how to react regardless of the status of the data, of the current snapshot of the data. And this is basically the, the second approach. The third approach, this is just too drastic. I have never done this uh, practice, but if you if you need to do it, you can do this way, which is train multiple models depending on which data set is missing. So let's say you already know um, clicks data, but you don't know accounting data. Then you train a data set, that, you train a model that only looks at clicks. And then you train a model that looks at clicks and sales. And depending on which data set you have already updated, you run the program. I believe this is just too crazy, right? just too drastic. I believe that the first two techniques will be enough for 99% of your use cases. But in any case, you have here the three strategies you can do in case you have to deal with delayed data. If you like this video, tell me in the comments what problems have you faced with delayed data and how you tackle it. And remember, like, subscribe, and activate the notifications. Hope to see you soon. Bye.